Hey everybody, it's Jack here. Apologies for the hat and the awful excuse of a beard. You don't want to see the monstrosity that's under this thing. I'm suffering from lockdown and uh, the hair is not looking good. Not that it ever really does. Uh, I'm really excited to announce that um, me and Ben Blue have got a little series uh, going on together. I hope it turns into a series. Uh, we'll let you be the judges of whether you enjoy uh, this episode off the back of the success last week. You guys seem to love it, which was really good. Today we go over everything uh, regarding the East Anglian derby, our best moments, our worst moments, the favourite players we've seen in them times. Um, we get into a really good chat actually. I also want to say we've got some posters on sale. There's about 15 or so left. The design is on screen now. 10% uh, of the profits go to NHS charities together. TNC are trying to do their bit to help out uh, the people that need it most during these really challenging times. Um, it's not easy for anyone, but hopefully we can do our bit. Uh, it's a fiver, free posters and packaging. I think we've got about 20 left, so be quick. If you want one, the links to them will be in the description below. And without further ado, Let's get straight into the video. Hey everybody, how are we all doing? Myself, Jack Grief here, joined once again with Ben Bloom. Um, the first episode of Reeve and Bloom, I'm going to call it, went down so well that uh, we thought we'd Bloom come back Reeve. again. Yeah, Bloom and Reeve. Although, Ben, I was talking to my girlfriend about, um, about us maybe starting a little series and she said, yeah. oh, what, what are you going to call it? And I said, well, you know, Bloom and Reeve, Reeve and Bloom. And she said, it sounds a bit like a florist. Okay, um, I'm so, the blue. But what? I don't really know. I don't really know. Is your missus in marketing? She's not. She's in kind of research, sort of customer research. And oh, so she probably does people. know more about it than we do. Maybe, yeah. So I don't. I, that was kind of one of the things I was going to ask the ask the um, people watching. What could Reeve and Bloom be? Could it be a builders? Could it be a, a florist's? What could it be? A, fu a funeral home. A funeral no, that's <laughs> probably not the right thing to say at the moment, is it, Jack? <laughs> Sorry, everybody. No. Um, but how are you, mate, anyway? Start. I'm good, yeah. And, I mean, obviously, all of us youtube -y people have had um, have had trouble getting content out. We want to put stuff up, but we don't want to put rubbish up and yeah. just, you know, go over the same, oh, how's the season going to finish type thing. So, um you got in contact, didn't you? And um, hopefully, and we're very much led by audience on this because yes. we've got distinct things, but we're going to try and do a few different topics and a few different shows. And there could be five episodes of this. There could be <laughs> 700 and it could be on primetime TV before, <laughs> before you know it. But that's the general idea, Jack. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I completely echo your thoughts. It's, it's really tough putting content out there that you're proud of. But also, you've got to put stuff out there, and uh, and people seem to like us two coming yeah. together. You know, Norwich fan, Ipswich fan, we're good friends. So hopefully, we can come up with something relatively you get, watchable. You get the odd buffoon who doesn't quite understand that we're not in a stadium yeah. flicking bees at each other; that we are mates just having a chat. But hopefully, um, in a time where everybody's coming together, people can look past. Football in rivalries, Jack, which might be a good seg to what you're about to say, my friend. It's a brilliant link. You've, uh, you've teed me up nicely. Yeah, today we're going to be talking about the East Anglian derby. What better place to start? Um, our favourite ones, our worst memories, our first ever derbies. And whether the East Anglian derby is actually that good, I guess. Um, so, Ben, we'll start with you, mate. Where does the East Anglian derby rank in terms of derbies across the whole of the country? Is it as fierce as us Norwich fans and you Ipswich fans like to think it is? Fingers crossed. I, I think it is. I, I do genuinely think think there's something there. Obviously, every now and then on Twitter, you'll see, I don't know, vis, at Vicious Vardy will do his <laughs> tier list. of, um, And I think people from outside the area, they always, you know, look with a bit of derision at, at Suffolk and Norfolk because it's out on the um out on the east side of the country and the farmer boy reputation <laughs> but I think you said it uh, I think these are your words that it's it's actually it's Norfolk versus Suffolk as well so yeah. it's two whole counties I think the distance is a good thing because it's the only time you go there you know <laughs> yeah. everyone travels this way everyone travels this way I have to say my sister lives in Norwich so it's not actually the only time I, I go to I go to Norwich because I have a young um, a young nephew there but I think it's great and I come from a position of um, obviously doing the championship uh, so for example last season I was at both 
Forest versus Derby. And I was at both Villa Birmingham. I do have to say that's that's different yeah. scale, especially at Birmingham. That is frightening. And that was the one where the guy comes out of the oh, of stand and tries to lay one on Grealish. And then Grealish, of course, sits up, grins, and then scores the winning goal the, <laughs> yeah. the other end. That was... That was I don't feel scared when I go to Ipswich Norwich. I felt I felt a bit scared. Um, obviously, there's Sunderland, Newcastle, and there's the weird ones where Man United and Liverpool and Man United and Leeds is more kind of vicious. You got um, Southampton and Pompey. You know, where, wherever there's Pompey fans, it's a bit um, spicy. And obviously, now you have got Cardiff and Swansea. Um, what is what is what is your take on that? Do we? I I think it's great. It means mm. a lot to me. Um, I don't think the wider wider football world gets it. But what's what's your view? Yeah, I think I, I never quite understand, and we're doing the exact thing now, so I can't really criticise too. Much. I never quite understand when people compare their kind of derbies. It's like this is our derby, and it doesn't matter if it doesn't seem fierce to other fans and to us. It is like when we're in the same division, the biggest game of the season. I don't necessarily enjoy them. I don't. I think that's a fairly popular opinion, especially when you're either fighting against relegation or promotion. It suddenly becomes something a whole lot bigger. And whenever we go to Ipswich, it's always a nightmare to get into the ground. You're kind of stuffed into this pub. At least we've got an away pub, unlike Ipswich fans coming to Norwich, which is which is an absolute disgrace. Um, but it's just not an enjoyable experience. The actual game itself, I think I'm, I'm with you. I've never felt scared necessarily going to a game, which is a good thing, by the way. I don't think anyone should ever be scared of, of going to football matches. Um, but it's definitely fierce. Like There's been occasions over the past... I mean, I can only talk sort of... My first one was back in 05, and then I missed a few years. But over the last you know sort of 10 years, I've been going to them regularly... There's been some really kind of big moments in them games where you've kind of had to take a big, deep breath in and go, wow, like this is actually happening. Um, and it's certainly a different feeling to any any other game as well. It's weird. It's it's nervous energy. It's, it's scared. Um, it's a whole concoction of emotions that kind of go into the day. And you walk away. If you win or you lose, it's almost that sigh of relief where you go, oh, thank God that's over for another you know, a few months or, or a season or, or what have you. So, yeah, I, I don't think it can compare to, to the massive derbies, but it's very unique in the sense it's county against county. As you say, a lot of Norwich fans or a lot of Ipswich fans won't venture into the other county for, for maybe... It's other... any time they go, yeah. Exactly. Like, we, when I was living in Norfolk, we rarely went into Suffolk. It, we, we had a few kind well, of... Jack, and Jack, because of the geography of it, if you're, say... Norwich and you're going to go down to London you go down the A11 and miss it out if you're if you're Ipswich if you're not specifically going to Norwich for something you don't pass through because there's there's a big sea the other side of it there's no (laughs) so I think the geography does um what I was going to mention though Jack is I I do I'm I'm obviously a fair bit older than you so I remember when they would play them on Saturdays at Mm. 3 p.m and on a Tuesday night at 7 45 obviously well, we have, we have to we have to talk about these sooner or later. But the last one, the five one was on a yeah. was it on a Thursday or a Friday. Yeah, or it was over Easter, wasn't it? Something weird. Well, yeah. that was the last one that they've done. I do, and a lot of people agree with me. I know from the Ipswich end that um, they think that the policing is overkill now because for years we've had eleven a.m. on a Sunday, twelve thirty. Even the playoff one was like five past two, wasn't it? They. Uh, what's your What's your view on um, whether it could go back to um, a 3 p.m. Because a lot of people, they say, oh, wow, two arrests and 100 quid's worth of damage done. And normally the arrest is just someone drinking too much. And yeah. um, after the eighth time the copper goes, mate, walk on. Yeah, they yeah. Just, okay, look, I'm going to arrest you after they've been warned, you know, eight times. What's your view on the actual placement in, in the day and... Um, is it over policed, or if they took that away, would it just be a free for all? I think it's a really, you know, complex debate. I've seen some really kind of nasty things go on after away games at, at down at Portman Road. So you come out of the away end, and then the majority of people are going to then catch the train up at the station. So you come out, you turn right, and then the Ipswich fans are also pouring out of the home end. So you're sectioned by this kind of panelling of fences 
with police stood in between. So say you're doing that for 300 yards, you're walking towards the train station, Ipswich fans are going in the other direction or the same direction. I don't know the geography of Portman Road too well, but I think Ipswich fans can then go in the same direction as the train station and turn right or something. Um, so you're walking in a similar direction and then the policing just stops. And, and Norwich fans and Ipswich fans, it's just like a free-for-all. And obviously, if you're giving lip to each other across the fences, which is pointless, utterly pointless then people are going to come together at the end of that. And I've seen some really nasty fights and, you know, um, that's never nice to see. In terms of the placements of the games, it's I don't quite understand it. If the game is at midday on a Sunday or seven o'clock on a Friday, people are going to find time to drink. <laughs> when we, um, I'm not sure what season it was, but I can remember it being like a half 12 kickoff on Sky. The pub opened at 7 a.m., in Ipswich, there were people coming on the like on the six o'clock oh, train. Oh, the six a.m. train. On the six a.m. Yeah. train from Norwich with tinnies in their hand, ready to pour in the pub at and eight Jack, o'clock. You can imagine the people that run the station hotel probably circle on their diary. When's Norwich coming? We're going to sell it. We're going to order in extra um, extra beer barrels for that for that day. They you kind I mean, of don't blame them in some way because if the Norwich fans behave, that's their best paid. Of um, course, it's like the, the they've got four hours of constant customers queued out of the door. Even if, and you know, it happens. Even if there's a couple of hundred quid's worth of damage, it's offset by the by the sale of beer. So I don't think that the timing of games necessarily matter. It always feels better of an evening, maybe because that five one sticks out so much under the lights. It's always really special. Um, but police, look, I'm not a police officer. I'm sure there's a lot of planning that goes into it. There's a lot of money that goes into it. Fans just need to be sensible. We don't make it easy for the coppers. Um, but there certainly needs to be a bit more thinking behind um, the trouble I've seen outside of Portman Road. And I'm sure it happens outside of Carroll. I can remember watching one of your videos from, I think it was after the Tim Close goal, um, when you're all kind of stopped. And it was just, it was just a bit of a but The worst thing about that, Jack, was that and I was right. I wanted to get back to my car to do my video. I was right at the front. I had a line of police right in front of me. And of course, I'm a fairly camp, mild mannered <laughs> gentleman. So I'm not going to, so, you know, sort of chattering to them. And then there was a big push. And then the police pushed back. And I'm like, oh, God, am I going to be in the middle of some nonsense here? And then they just let the, the Ipswich fans broke through the line. And yeah. the police just went, fine. Yeah. So you go. That, that was the worry was that. Fair enough if you're going to have an exit strategy. I know we're talking about exit strategies a lot at the moment, but you know, t- tell us what it is before the game. Yeah. Say right after the game, if you go to this game, you will be um, kept in for. Tell us the exact time. You know, 45 minutes after the final whistle goes. Please be patient. Um, we can serve you soft drinks in the <laughs> bar or whatever behind. Please don't leave your seat. Don't. But we didn't get told any of that. And look, um, this is not a because I know there's been problems, problems both ends. In fact, the the last one um, at Portman Road, the one-one draw where Edwards and Lightner scored. Yeah. The was that the last one at Portman Road? Yeah. Blimey. Yeah. Paul Hurst is unbeaten. Ages ago. <laughs> Jack Paul Hurst is unbeaten. <laughs> <laughs> And Ipswich fan said he does nothing. Blimey. (laughs) Well, he's got a dance site. We're going to go through this. And he's got a dance site, better record than anyone going back to Jim Magill and put it that way. (laughs) Um, But Jack, what you're talking about, the the barricade finished, I'm not joking, 15 metres outside the ground. So look, we could we could go on and on about that. I think the thing is as well, as I can already, you know, tell some of the comments we're going to get on Twitter. Some people go to these Derby games looking for trouble. And if that's your cup of tea, fine but it's not mine i know it's not yours like i go i go there for it's fun you know giving each other a little bit in the ground but it's never going to be more than that for me oh don't Um, get me wrong jack when i talk about going into birmingham city and uh, there there was something um what's the word there was something exciting about the danger though that you know I i sat on the corner right next to the villa fans and all that would that was nasty. And of course I wasn't, yeah, I, I was a complete neutral. I was just sitting there, to, but you know, that there, there was something appealing about what that. What is it danger. about, like, what is, where does that energy come from though? Is that because the clubs are so much closer? Is it because they've got more I think as well, in the past? Jack, you've, or? you've got a kind of, 
working class, upper working class dynamic between Villa and Birmingham, the different parts of the city, haven't you? Yeah. I think as well. And um, I it, look, Norwich have dominated the last um, sort of 10 years or so. But with Villa and Birmingham, there's a real sense that one club is quite a lot bigger than the other yeah. as well. So there's obviously, you know what football fans are like. There's going to be a massive chip on the shoulder from the smaller club and a massive arrogance from and we'll talk about how how fans behave and you know perpetuate the thing because i believe the whole rivalry does come from the if you talk to talk, you talk to a lot of players mm. it's you know it's just oh we're training we're playing yeah. I, I get what it means to the fans but um this is my job and i'm gonna churn out <laughs> hopefully three four hundred of these football matches in my career it means everything to the fans though and that's where the rivalry comes massively from. Um, yeah, let's get on to onto some Derby memories then. I guess let's go from our first ever Derby that we attended. What was it like? Was it a good experience for you, Ben? Was it a, was it a bad one? Oh no, it was it was amazing. So this is 1993, April the 19th. So it's another Easter one because the random computer fixture generator always seems to kind of put them in the same place, doesn't it? Jack? Yeah in the calendar um so and this is actually a really good Norwich team the one that finished third and I was surprised when I looked it up Ipswich did the double over them and um it was an evening game as well I, I haven't looked up the actual day of the week I guess it was a <laughs> Tuesday night or something Ipswich won 3-1 and all I remember because they went bang bang they scored two quick goals Jason Dezel and Mick Stockwell in the first half and I remember just as a young boy so I'm 11 years old at this point the noise for the first goal and then when you get a, you know, it can't get any better than this. You know, Ipswich finished 16th, so this is Norwich were better than Ipswich that yeah, season, yeah. and obviously um, Chris Sutton's going to score in this game. Um, I just remember the noise for the second goal, and then um, Sutton gets one back, and then Dazelle scores another one for the winner. And um, shamefully, 1993, the last time Ipswich did the double over Norwich. Was it really? Yeah, um, I hope I'm wrong about that stat, but I had a quick quick scan down for two w's in a in a row on the list i've got and for a league double that is that's impressive i'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's so that was my first one in in 93 first season of the premier league when football was brilliant probably if you watch the game back it's probably just 500 long balls <laughs> and five red card tackles but what was yours jack mine was now i'm just trying to think what my first at Carrow road was the first i can remember i wasn't actually at the game but so i my first ever norwich game was in 2000, I think it was 2005, it was the 2004-2005 season. You got promoted. So we were in the Premier League at this point. Oh, it was Premier League. So so my first game was under Worthington. I I don't really come from a massive football fan, sort of footballing family. So um, that was my first ever Norwich game. We were then obviously playing you the following season. Now, that was the time when Huckabee scored at Portman Road. You were down to 10 men. Um... Now, I'm trying to think what my first at Cow Road was. I can't actually remember. But it was a really strange, my kind of um, footballing kind of supporting career, if you want to call it that so far, has been really odd between for Norwich. There's been multiple promotions, multiple relegations, a massive period in that when both of the clubs haven't been in the same divisions. And then more recently, we've had a lot of games and there's been a lot riding on them games, whether it's us both in playoffs, whether it's us down near the bottom, whether it's you down near the bottom, us fighting for promotion. So my first real one that sticks out, I think I listened to it on the radio. It was Huckabee um, scoring at Portman Road to win 1-0. So that was my first one. So a a positive start um, for for, For both of us. For both of us, yeah, which is good. So yeah, mine was 2005, it would have been. So a bit later than you. Um, but it's still bonkers. That was 15 years ago. Oh, I, I, I think yeah, that yeah. 2005 in my head is like a few years ago. It's crazy. Um, okay, so that's our first one. What's the best derby you've ever been to? Now, you can you know, infer this however you like, whether that's the day you had, whether it was the result, whether what it meant to you, whatever you, you kind of want to take it. I think um, for a lot of reasons, not just for the score, but um, the 5-0, I was... I was 15 and I went in the North stand at Ipswich with my mates. You know, you want to be a gangster at that age. And um, we had a really good side. Mike Walker had come back to Norwich and ne- never, never go back. It wasn't, it, he was never, never going to, never going to work the, um, 
the second time. And I remember as well, I'm pretty sure I'd been to, yeah, I'd, I'd seen us win at Manchester City. I think we talked about that on the last podcast. The, yeah. On the, went, on the Wednesday night, I think, I just remember having a brilliant week. And I remember watching wrestling with Stone Cold <laughs> Steve Austin with my mate during that week. And then we all went to the ground. Obviously, I'm 15, so, and I'm a good boy, so we weren't drinking at this point. <laughs> sure. but I was there with my mates, and just the, the game was ridiculous. We, um, Alex Maffey scores... And if you look back at it, it's a brilliant goal after about 45 seconds yeah. and just the whole and with three nil up at half time. And there's I think um, I've spoken to Jono about this as well. Sorry, people hate it when podcasters use footballers nicknames. Don't they? <laughs> I've spoken to David Johnson about, <laughs> about this and he missed like two one on ones. We could have been five nil up at half time. Um, poor old Andy Marshall didn't have a very good second half, but I'm sure he's going to be mentioned again in this in this rivalry for being one of the players brave enough to cross the divide. But yeah, just that time of that time of life, the fact that I didn't used to go in the North Stand very often and five nil, as we know, is the biggest winning margin in the game. So yeah, twenty first of Feb ninety eight, five nil. It's really yours, interesting you kind of met so you were fifteen there. That's a really yeah. I feel like that's quite an exciting age to be going to football. If yeah. you've been going for a few years before that, you're often going with a grandparent parent. or a parent or yeah. someone. And then when you get to like 15, 16, 17, you can maybe start to go just with your mates, like find your own way to away games. And it's like, it's freedom, isn't it, for a little bit. And for that day, it's so kind of exciting. I remember going to a few um, games at Portland Road at that age. And it's really it really opens your eyes up sort of thing because it's like, I can do what I want sort of thing. Yeah. I haven't got a parent watching me. So. Yes. And it's not even about football. It's about your future independence. And it's difficult as a 15 year old because the, the people you look up to are the, all the hooligans who are starting yeah. all the chants and all the fights and stuff. You're like, I want to be like yeah, that yeah. guy. You don't want to be like the guy just standing watching who's probably got a really good job and a nice family. Life, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, I funny remember... you, it's funny you talk about the North down there as well because I can remember my first game in the Barclays. So I used to sit up in the Norwich and Peterborough with my dad and then I moved into the Barclays. Which one's the Norwich and Peterborough? Is that so that's the, the one R- opposite. It was River, River End. End. Yeah, yeah, River yeah, End. Yeah. Um, and then when I moved into the Barclays, it was like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Norwich fan now. This is where <laughs> I belong sort of thing. Um, and now it's like I'd quite like to just sit on one of their nice padded seats if I had the chance up near Dean. Jack, we we asked Jim McGillan about this. This is the North Stand with the roof coming right mm. down, which was ten times louder. Okay, there's half as many seats, ten times louder. And I I look back at one of the derbies as well. Mm. The Norwich fans are. I don't know whether, and I'm sure the Symmetrich historians will tell me about this. The Norwich fans are over the other side of the Cobalt Stand. Okay. The, the atmosphere, if they did that, would be if you had the away yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess you'd worry about missiles and stuff from the ones that are... That's, that's the worst, the stupid thing about it, is that... But you, the would, Ipswich fans are right next to the Barclay, aren't they? Which is apparently yeah, yeah, the... Yeah, true, but with 700 Norfolk police in between true. and a massive scoreboard. There, there always does seem to be a bit of a sense of distance, I think, in both in both stadiums, doesn't it? The way it's... Yeah, if you're sat in Churchman's as an Ipswich fan, you do feel really removed you're a little bit higher up than that you can't quite see into them as well um, yeah. so yeah maybe yeah, that so yeah my favorite derby there's to be fair as a Norwich fan sort of looking back over the past 10 seasons or whatever there's been a lot to choose from I'm actually going to go with last season's 3-0 at Carrow Road for me it was we went into that game we knew that we were better than than you we knew that we had a really special team I think the the team that we had last season was perfectly set up for a derby because we had a lot of players, as you mentioned earlier, who didn't really care that it was a derby. It was just another game for them. You look at the likes of Tom Tribal, Tim Krull knew the knew what it was all about. He's played in bigger derbies than this. It, it's not really much to him. Timu Puki couldn't care less whether he was playing Ipswich or Barnsley. Um, and then we had some <laughs> players who it meant the world to, like Todd Cantwell spoke. Steeperman as well. Steeperman. I saw that picture last week of him kind of holding, I, I can't remember what he was doing, but it was marvellous. 
Um, so he was we being a shit house, Jack. That's what it's called. <laughs> but then so were two thousand people in the Ipswich stand. So, and we'll, we'll come back to this, Jack. Um, it is tit for tat. We all know yeah. it's tit for tat, don't we? Didn't I think he sort of held up like the three nil or something? I because I, I, I think it was I, only two at that point. Cause was it, it two? If you okay. remember, you scored from the corner and it got it got disallowed. So he turned around and oh, gave yes. it big, big from the corner, and then obviously, um, yeah. It's small mercies for Ipswich fans at that point. That's Sorry, go correct. on. Yeah, but that, as, talking about that photo, if people haven't seen it, it's on Twitter somewhere. It's where Steepman turns around and the photographer's got it. So it's behind Steepman and facing the away end. And someone played a game last week of zooming into all of the Ipswich fans, seeing what they were doing. It's marvellous, some of the faces. <laughs> um, but yeah, that game, it was there was a lot of nerves riding on that because it was like you were almost down. Paul Lambert returns to... To Carrot, it felt like you were going to be the party poopers. It was going to be our sort of season to, to really celebrate. And we went into that game. We thought promotion was, was on. It was on. Um, but you could ruin it. And to get that early goal after, was it 40-something seconds with through Onel? And it just killed the game off straight away. And it was party time after 40 seconds. The nerves went. It was just wonderful. And we played some really nice football that day. Timmy Pukki was electric. When Deer was really good, Steeperman pulled the strings. And I just remember walking out of, of Cow Road on that day. The sun was beaming down. And I just thought, wow, like what a season this is. But I think it was more the season we were in and Lambert having his meltdown, of course, we'll probably get onto that later. Sent to the stands. Everything that could have gone right did go right that day. Um, and it, it was kind of the story of the season. Like we got, we played so well, we got a bit of luck. Everything went in our, in our favour. There's been some really magical derbies over the years, but that, for me, was my highlight, um, for sure. It was really, really special. No. Uh, yeah, that was it. <laughs> I just got a sick feeling in my mouth. <laughs> all, of that, so, yeah. um, all right, best derby to worst derby, then. You kick off, mate. Well, that's the reason I'm staying quiet, because would you believe... Is that we your worst one? <laughs> We haven't um, we haven't spoken about this. We just sent yeah, a rough yeah. format to each other. I had a long think because look, obviously it's been so bad for Ipswich and the derbies. Norwich of, you know, even going back to after that five nil, I can reel off Craig Bellamy scoring a winner, Darren Huckabee scoring a winner, Leon McKenzie scoring yeah. a winner, um, James Madison scoring a winner, Lewis Graben, <laughs> who was offside scoring a winner. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can I can reel all of those off. Um, there's been a big sense, and we'll talk about this during the unbeaten streak, that um, Norwich, have, Norwich have been favourites for a lot of these games. They've been, you know, they've had better squads and, you know, they've been on parachute payments and have been out of the Premier League. But there was, I, I, I could pick any of the home defeats because it's just never nice seeing, because uh, it's always full. Um, I wish we'd give you less tickets, you know what I mean? It's always full. <laughs> It's never nice seeing. I I wait for the final whistle. I turn around and I leave. I don't want to see yeah, yeah. you guys celebrating in our stadium. It's it's painful, you know. Um, but yeah, I picked the three nil, Jack. I have to say because it's the only one I've attended, knowing we were going to lose, and that right. makes me that makes me really sad. All the other ones, when Mick McCarthy's your manager, you yeah. can win any game. So you, did you the Lambert have... factor mean nothing that day? No, we. we, we Worst team in championship history, virtually, Jack. Honestly, mm. um, look, there you always allow your brain a little five. Per- what if we win? Yeah, what if bottom of the league beats top of the league? And I assume you're on that eight game winning streak at this point, as yeah. Well, we were, or, actually, the, that's very true. Yeah, or it was the start of it. Five percent of your brain goes, What if we win? And I'm a stats guy, and I'm like, I'm sure we probably spoke before the pod. There is, there is no stat you could find to say that Ipswich have mm. any chance whatsoever in in that game. And I think it was just the haplessness of that first goal of we, we I just remember distinctly and I'm a tactics nerd, I'm like, we're playing a four four two diamond. We're playing a four four two diamond against Aaron's and Lewis, the <laughs> most advanced fullbacks in the entire division. Yeah. And I'm like, for God's sake, John Nolan, start the game, just just come out just press and of course you've got a team full of confidence a team and the goal was hapless yeah. as well it was there was like excuse headed it back across someone failed to clear it and it and someone got a that, kick in the face was it is it godfrey or someone because they went in for the header know, and they got a proper boot in the face yeah but can you just imagine from an Ipswich fan's point of view mm. it's like here comes aaron's no one's tackling him no not gonna no 
Have you seen him play before? No, uh, uh, not gonna. Oh, it's gone in the. They're gonna score. No, it's clear. They're, they're gonna score. Get the goal. Yeah. It, can you imagine the haplessness of it of setting this whole thing up? Um, it, obviously in the second half it was Pookie's quality. Um, and particularly the one where he took it really early and put it in the corner was a great yeah. goal. You, know, you have you hold your hands up and you say, you say, why is no one watching this guy every week? He hits it early, low yeah. into the corners. Get get ready for it. But obviously he was too good for that division. Um, a lot of people talk about the Lambert thing. Um, what's your re- people... what's your recollection of that moment from from the well, away end? Because obviously I've only got my my eyes, and I, I it was all a bit of a blur. You can't really see what's going on. Oh, Jack, I was over with the press. Oh, you were I, of I course. Was right. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah, I was right there. Um, so I saw every every part of it. Um. Part of me felt a little bit sorry for him because um, it felt a little bit desperate. It mm. felt a little bit like, and Ipswich fans do, I've heard a lot say, oh, that was a publicity stunt to make himself look look like the tough guy. You know, Really? Team, yeah, yeah, the team's going down the pan. A lot of people say he didn't lose it. He knew exactly... He knew exactly wow. what he was doing. They're what I can tell you, and you know, what's the big German coach Chris called? Chris Domangala. Uh, I'm not yeah, going to yeah. translate The one that. with all the tattoos down his arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was shithousing yeah, massively. Yeah, he is a shithouse. Yeah, he was massively. <laughs> so he wound um, Lambert up, and then only Paul Lambert knows whether he lost the plot or that was a big sign of, okay, my team's going down, but I'm going to wave a big... Graham Sooners planting a <laughs> flag in the ground thing and you know I'm gonna I'm basically gonna get myself sent off only Paul Lambert knows that um yeah um is it is it almost one of them things where managers try and deflect the attention off of the team because the team on the pitch was, certainly wasn't doing what he wanted them to do so it was almost like right let's try and deflect some pressure off of them onto me. A bit of a Jose Mourinho Absolutely. classic trick, isn't it? Oh, I've seen, I've and never... it, in the end, it went the other way. It, it made Ipswich look even more kind of, well, not embarrassing on the day. Yeah, it was embarrassing. It is, I mean, it is embarrassing. Some people liked it. Some people were like, because um, the quote he kept coming out with was, we're not going to let them push us around anymore. Yes. And there, there does need to be a certain amount of that. And when we talk about the, the streak that you're on at the moment, um, Ipswich have been pushed around by Norwich on the pitch for um, for a lot of years. So there is a part of that that's, you know, that, that's right. It's very difficult. It really has split people. I'm sure some Norwich fans found it funny. You know, I'm sure some Ipswich fans will have gone, oh, that's disgraceful, what have you. Um, what actually ha- Did someone... Someone got smashed, it was, didn't they? Yeah, it was Max Aaron's. I think it was a really bad challenge on Max Aaron's. It, it should have what? been a red on if right on the touchline. I think I think it was Nolan who isn't. Uh, I don't think I, I don't want to come on a podcast and say he's not that kind of player because you know a, a bad foul is a bad foul. Yeah. I remember it being strange. Who who you know who just hit him? Mm. Was it Nolan? You know because you'd expect uh, I, I don't know Jonas Knudsen to have done that or Mauricio <laughs> Tarico or. Jim McGilton or you know even Matt Holland fairly to just go in and clean someone out but yeah yeah it was it was not it was not good I mean you remember the sun coming out at the end I remember the rain pouring as I'm walking in it's so funny how yeah. you remember it, you remember it differently um, yeah that and was a, just that was a really odd moment for me it was like the demise of this once great manager just continues it's like what is he doing and, and I was obviously madness, yeah. yeah I was probably at one of the furthest points in the ground because I was like diagonal to the I'm basically right near the, the away end in the Barclay and I just was watching I was like what is going on first of all I was like how was Nolan not being red carded that looks like an awful challenge and then you kind of see the scuffle and it was like what's going on and then you see sort of Lambert trotting up to the executive box it was all a very odd moment but I think if that wouldn't have happened, because the rest of the first half was relatively scrappy, wasn't it? And there were chances for kind of both teams in yeah, that I mean, point. We, and that uh, kind of tipped it, I felt, in Norwich's favour. And uh, that kind of sums up how depressing it was, because I've said this to you before, that wasn't a that wasn't a bad performance by Ipswich. And no. I know we lost 3-0 in, in those terms. You could see the plan to stop the goal kicks coming out. And I think they'd, they'd had a couple of judges put a couple of set plays in. But... 
it, just sitting there knowing that the teams were just light years apart and also this sense of how modern and progressive that Norwich team was and how dated the Ipswich approach was. So, yeah, can we stop talking about it now? <laughs> of course. <laughs> that, I mean, I could, I could pick out any any one of the home defeats because that's painful. And there's a story why I wasn't at the 5-1, but I'm sure we'll get, I wasn't at the 5-1, so that would probably be, be the worst then. But no, I've just for pure depressing narrative, I've just I've just gone for that one. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've obviously been to, to a few games in which Ipswich have won, but I don't think I was kind of old enough to quite understand what it really meant. So it didn't really function in my head so much. I want to go with a bit of a left field worst derby. So we actually won the game. It was... Madison, who scored the goal at Portman Road. But it was just quality-wise. I just remember watching that. And I thought, the last time we kind of played you was, you were in the, up in the top six with a, with a relatively decent squad under, under Mick McCarthy. And you were like, Ipswich are trying to do something here. We obviously went up and got promoted. And then we were back in the championship under Daniel Farker. And it was like, wow, this is you know, this could be a really exciting time. And obviously it has turned into be a really exciting time. But I remember watching that game and just thinking, where where are we going? Where are Ipswich going? And it was just a bit of a, a bit of a dull game. And I remember walking out of, of Portman Road that day and thinking, yeah, we've won. And I think we were actually up near the it was relatively early on in the season. We were up near. You the won top five of. away games on the trot, didn't you? And yeah, just scored in like all of them, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. But I was what I was watching. I was thinking, although we're winning games, this isn't this isn't going to last. Um, we we talked about you know when you were up near the top of League One at the start of this season, and you were winning games, but you were like, this isn't not sustainable. There's not a yeah. pattern here. This isn't gonna this isn't gonna sustain. And I walked out on that, and I just thought this this surely is one of the worst derbies that I've watched in terms of quality it was that individual bit of brilliance from Madison that separated the teams and that was the story of our season Madison was the only player kind of running the show I I looked back at the squad that we put out that day we had Harrison Reed and Tom Tribal as holding midfield it was it was a relatively negative Stieperman left back Stieperman left back we had Yannick Vilchke um who we somehow paid seven million pounds for um (laughs) out at, at left wing I think he was I think he assisted the goal that day actually um but I walked out and I've never had that kind of deflated feeling. I walked in Portman Road thinking, this is a derby, I'm dead up for it. And I just walked out thinking, oh, you know, you know when you walk out of football, you just, you don't really have a, an emotion. It's just the sort of that numbness. So that but, was... But Jack, Jack, the last couple of years under Mick, there were a lot of games like that where yeah. he was like, I'm going to move the chess pieces around, but I'm going to stink this out first of all. And, you know, it's going to be really, really tight. And... Uh, we, we've talked on the Blue Monday podcast about a sense of uh, Ipswich historically now for, for being bottlers. And okay. there's a big feeling in the last three Portman Road games that they've, they've bottled it, especially the especially the one where they took the lead. Um, yeah. You know, at the and that's that's the whole weird thing. When we talk about the first game last season, yeah. um, it, we were both in the bottom six. And uh, the, the lightning goal, right? Yeah, Gwion yeah. Edwards gives um, gives us the lead, and you you just th- there's this big narrative. If we hold out and win that game, does Daniel Farker even last? It's so true. So, so, it's so on, true. That was so a, nice that edge, was a really yeah. odd game. The other the other sort of sixty seconds I want to talk about really quickly is Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. is um the worst kind of gut wrenching feeling of oh my god we are actually going to lose was Chambers' goal. Um, at Carrow Road in the 90 some or 89th minute, it was really late on down at the other end. And I, I've said many a time, I sit right next to the away end, and sometimes it's glorious, sometimes it's horrific. And I think it's r- written in a book actually. I've got a real kind of guilty pleasure of watching an away end erupt. And I always some, film it for my vlog. Yeah, there's something really kind of special about it. People really kind of packed in, and then that eruption of noise. And I'd never heard the away end go off like that before. And there was such relief. There was such passion. And it was like Norwich had played really poorly that day. And I was like, yeah, you, Ipswich have done it. Um, that's my kind of unbeaten, um, little unbeaten streak over. That's Norwich's unbeaten streak over. And then for that 60 seconds, it was horrible. And then close scores and it's all fine again. Um, and I sold a load of posters off the back of it. But uh, <laughs> we won't talk about that. <laughs> um, 
I still get stick about that off the Ipswich fans. Why are you selling a Why are you selling the one run post? That was actually one of the draw. That was yeah. one of the best pieces of merchandise I've ever done. Um, so that was good, and a lot, by the way, a lot of Norwich fans bought that from Suffolk. So um, I hope uh, I hope they've all got them nice and safely. But yeah, that was okay. a, that was a really odd game. Um, yeah, it's been a really odd sort of last ten years, really, hasn't it? Uh, let's get on to the best player then. This can be for for Norwich or Ipswich. I, I, I'm I'm not I'm not going to be picky. Who's the one player who's kind of sat back and gone, wow, they're they're good. Um, in terms of the actual games, there's three I've picked out, um, and two of them are fullbacks. Um, okay. Obviously, I have to go for Danny Haynes for that period yeah. of just. I think he scored four goals in derbies. Yeah. Okay. One of them may have brushed his arm <laughs> slightly, but you know, I watched I watched that about five times. Um, we'd have we'd have a better camera angle on it now. But the arm and the the defender's foot either it is inconclusive, but it may have <laughs> just you haven't got to defend him now, mate. It's counted, it counted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, there you go, there you go. So obviously Danny Haynes, um, but who just just seemed to pop out in those games, and um, I just remember. Our normal kind of go-to players didn't used to score against Norwich, and I always remember Mauricio Tarico, who you might not remember, who was a he was a great player. He was a fullback in the late nineties. He went on and played for we sold him to Spurs, and he played in the Premier League, and mm. he's worked for Gus Poyet a lot since. And he was an absolute shit house. He, he was a really good player. He was a typical. This is going to sound racist, isn't it? If I say typical Argentinian footballer, but you know, you know, you know when what I mean. Exactly that. I know exactly what you mean. The, yeah. The, the dark arts, and um, he was always really up for those um, Norwich games. And you had Darren Eady and Keith O'Neill, and you know those quick wingers, and um, yeah, he would get away with some <laughs> some interesting challenges on them. And there was a, a game again. I think. Might have even been a Friday night one. It was under the lights and we won 2-0. And um, he scored the opening goal. And it, you just like, he never scored. And this fullback pops. It was a really good goal as well. And it showed the football we used to play under George Burley. But don't, because that will make me cry. Um, <laughs> and he goes through and he sweeps it in. And um, it's, you know when a striker scores, they're like, yep, that's, that's, that's my job. Thanks, you know, thanks for the assist, whatever. And when a fullback scores and you see that kind of Marco Tardelli <laughs> yeah. look, and he just went mental. And um, just for him to, any Ipswich player who scores against Norwich, that goes, you know, that goes as a big star in their Massively. kind of career. So for that reason, and then Jonas Knudsen as, yeah. as well, who was kind of just bog standard championship fullbacks, gone off and Always played scored, for yeah. Malmo. And it scored, I think scored, through three, four goals in his career. Two of them were against Norwich. And obviously you talk about the away end and this is another game we bottled. But can you imagine from that away end, mm. uh, I can't even remember who put the cross in. Do you know, I think it might have even been Jordan Spencer. Which is quite <laughs> something. Isn't it? And he floats the cross in and you're looking in the box and you're going, please, where's Garner? Where's, <laughs> oh no, Garner even signed by then. Or, but you, you know, where's, where's McGoldrick, please. And then just out of your eye line as you're watching the cross, you <laughs> no way and then Nudson you're like Jesus Christ yeah. and of course he ran round the back of the back of the goal and over to us and that, that was a brilliant moment and everyone piles forward mm. so yeah Tariko Haynes and and Nudson and now I have to sit and listen to five minutes about Wes Houlihan away we go go on <laughs> no I'm, I'm actually I'm going to give I'm actually going to mention Nipswich player in this oh, okay um, so I've gone James Madison for obvious reasons okay. I think one of the most talented and just exciting players to watch for Norwich and very similar to Wes Houlihan who I'll give a mention to as well the way he had the ability to just turn on the ball to move on the ball to draw a foul he was almost good defensively as well because he could just relieve pressure he'd pick the ball up in your own half and he'd draw a foul and it would just like give you a bit of relief he scored a goal um in a do you remember the battle with Bielkowski in the Chambers and Closer game where Madison probably had three free kicks and he was putting them right in the corners and Bielkowski yeah. was saving them yeah we were we were terrified of him in that yeah game, it, he, it, he was really he was really marvellous I miss watching Madison Houlihan is up there as well I'm actually going to mention David McGoldrick now you might laugh here but McGoldrick was always a player and even when he when he's gone to Sheffield United when he's, in, him now, yeah. when he's in the lineup I'm scared and I don't think he ever performed particularly well against us um, and he certainly didn't the last time that Sheffield United came to town um, but he's just one of them players that I think you want 
in a derby. It was it was the same with Waghorn as well. In that kind of team, without Waghorn, you were a completely different side. It was that grit. It was that there was a goal in there somewhere. Um, set plays, God. Yeah. Set play. You know, they were the kind of players. And then if you go really far back, you know, your Darren Bents of the world, um, really special as well. But yeah, I think Madison for me in recent years, it was in a fairly poor team, unfortunately, and and didn't really go on to the heights that we would have hoped. But he was, um, yeah, he was really, really special. Uh, please do let us know your sort of favourite players that you've watched over the over the years down below, um, and we'll we'll take a look at them. Right, let's talk about what do you want to do now, Ben? We've got a few little um, bits left on the on the run yeah, order. Can we, let's just talk a little bit about the the current um, streak, which is unprecedented in derby history so Norwich are 12 unbeaten now seven wins and five draws look uh, my plea to Norwich fans here is um, this streak cannot begin at the last time Ipswich won so (laughs) don't say Ipswich haven't beaten Norwich because in that case Arsenal haven't beaten Doncaster for 117 (laughs) years yeah Um, because they haven't played Um, but yeah unprecedented streak so since the 4-1 victory um on the 28th of November 2010, that was on free-to-air TV. That and Grant oh, Holt scored a hat trick, didn't he? Oh yeah, um, yeah of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roy Keane was. Oh, it was BBC, um, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Roy Keane was Ipswich manager. We had who do we have? I can't even remember who we got sent off in that game. Delaney, yeah, possibly one of the one of the centre halves. Um, so the big caveat from Ipswich fans, obviously, look, 12 unbeaten is 12 unbeaten, but 10 of those seasons the teams haven't played, yeah. and there is a gap of. 1,220 days between two of the games. So okay. Norwich fans should get excited about the fact that it's 12 games. But the 10 years, Norwich has been in the Premier League for five of those seasons. So they haven't played. And there is one gap, like I say, of three years. Um, I had a look at the managers, Jack. Um, in that run, Paul Lambert yeah. wins two out of two. Neil Adams wins one out of one. Alex Neil two wins and three draws. Okay. Um, and Daniel Farker, two wins and two draws. So that makes the best manager statistically of that run, Paul Lambert. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ipswich managers in that time. Um, Keane had a defeat. Jewell had a defeat. McCarthy had eight of them, four draws, four defeats. Um, Paul Hurst is statistically the best <laughs> with one draw. Amazing. And obviously Paul Lambert, incredibly, um, has been on both sides of it. I just... I just did want to kind of say, um, looking at the big picture, obviously 12 unbeaten is is horrible for um, Ipswich fans. But the the solace I've got is which of those 12 games have Ipswich actually been favourites to win is what is the way I kind of look yeah. at it. Because um, obviously the first season... Yes, arguably on the spend, Ipswich should have been better than Norwich, but you're on this mad run, going to go straight through the division. And you're, you're talking not... like a gambler who's trying to justify their losses now. <laughs> yeah, <aren't I? laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but then all, all the other ones, Norwich have got parachute payments. They've just come down from the Premier League, you know, and the, the playoff games famously is Norwich are the, at that point, the biggest salary championship team of all time yeah. at that point. And Mick did well to even get as close as he as close as he did when you Jerome Houlihan Johnson Housen's still there, there yeah. Some really really good players yeah. there. there there's a couple there's a couple that great on me in the run Jack <laughs> obviously the Chambers and yes. closer one they they should win that game that was they, such a bonkers goal from us as well because um, yeah. Bart storms out of his box for no real reason. Hanley somehow runs the 100 metres in like seven seconds to, to <laughs> collect the cross. Puts in the most delightful ball for Close. And, and Close is miles up. It was a really odd goal, that one. And yeah, you should have won that. You should have won that. Yeah. Um, and just, we talked about the sense of bottling as well. Um, a couple of the draws at Portman Road um, where they've just felt flat and they've felt mm. like... Um, if we'd have gone for it, we could have done it. But really, um, you've been favourites for ninety percent of those games, haven't you? Yeah, so for sure. That would be that would be my get out. But we just thought we'd we'd broken it when when Chambers got that goal. It, it but... felt towards the last couple of games in that streak that 
I don't know if it was all kind of talk from Ipswich fans online, but you were kind of got to the point where it was like, we've got nothing to lose anymore, which almost made when we did eventually win, Ipswich fans weren't kind of as sad as they should have been because it was like, well, we weren't <laughs> going to win. It was like, no, we want to inflict pain on you guys. Like, well, you should be feeling down about this. But it, it almost felt like you got to the point of acceptance. Well, we what we were looking at was parachute payments, and it was always a case of. But does right. that, does that mean much on the day when you, you're still? Uh, no, no. But l- l- in terms of the big picture, let me let me that, look. It means nothing on the day, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But what we were hoping was, look, they've always been able to make a challenge, always. And then we see these parachute payments running out, running out, running out, and then we think, right, they're now going to be down okay. in the same in the same bracket as us as a as a team without money in the championship. Obviously, Stuart Webber turned that into a promotion somehow, amazingly. Um, we've, we've, we've talked about that until we're, <laughs> until we're blue in the face. But there was always a sense that even if we weren't going to get better, uh, the longer Norwich are away from the Premier League and that, mm. that extra money, the gap will close and then we have a chance of winning. That was, that was obviously on the day, yeah, balance sheets and history is, you know, irrelevant. But that was the hope that, that you were going to get worse. Can I just run the numbers for you quickly? Yeah, go for um, it, Jack. Um, so post-war, and Ipswich 43 wins, Norwich 42 wins. Is it um, really? Uh, 20, 22 draws. Um, Hugh Curran is Norwich's top scorer with five. John Walk with nine in Blimey. these games. What a player. Biggest win in margin is 5-0, three times, all by Ipswich. Um, hat-tricks for Norwich from uh, Hugh Curran and Grant Holt, the one we've just yeah. mentioned. Um, Ipswich, Day, Viljan. I think Viljan's was his debut. I'm, I'm, I, don't go back, I don't go back that far, but I think I'm right, 69, that that might have been his debut. Um, someone will kill me in the comments. <laughs> uh, Trevor Wymark, we don't have players like that anymore. And Alex Maffey, obviously. And I've just written down controversy as well, because obviously we've mentioned the Danny Haynes handball, yeah, a little possibly that might have won the game. Someone replayed the um, late equaliser by Pablo Cunhago, where Darren Bent hits the um, hits the post. Okay, he's miles offside. Is he? Yeah, Pablo, it hits the post. Pablo Cunhago was always, and this is a complete tangent, so apologies. Cunhago, I think it was like Football Manager twenty. 10 maybe it was before that yeah. he was like 34 the best free agent ever <laughs> get him in that's there. enough and about Pablo Cunhago yeah he scored he, he was a good player Jack he yeah. scored at Carrow Road as well in a game where Glenn Rhoda was your manager oh, we were 2 nil up at half time and it ended 2-2 that's yeah. another another bottle job um Lewis Graben was offside in 20 um 15. I was going to mention Lewis Graben, actually. He's certainly an anomaly. He scored, I think, three times against Ipswich. Um, He scored some important goals for us. Yet, he's one of the, I think, one of the only Norwich players who scored against Ipswich who no Norwich fans like at all. And it seems that every club Graben goes to, he leaves, and there's some kind of, like, sour taste in in the mouth. Yeah, it was the the manner in which he left. Yeah, very very good good player, player, actually. Um, But, yeah, Lewis Graben... Not much of a of, of a liking from Norwich fans. Um, in the game where da, 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 Nudson scored, and I can't remember who scored for you. Is yet was it Jerome? Yet another sweeping goal after 15 minutes. I can't remember who scored. I think the it was Housen. Was it Housen? Still there? That's it. Um, Housen did in the playoffs. Oh yeah, you? I'm thinking the playoffs. Um, no, it was Murphy, wasn't it? I don't recall. That was at Carrow Road. Um, anyway, in that game, Jonathan Douglas scores after five minutes and it's disallowed. And it is onside. We've had that. Yeah, we've no, had I that proven that since. And you won't remember this. Um, in 1995, 96, possibly, um, Norwich are 2 0 up at Carrow Road. Kevin Lynch, the referee, gives a penalty. John Walk scores. John Walk's like 37 now. <laughs> then. A minute later or two, he gives another penalty at the Barclay end and then changes his mind. Walker's literally got the ball to... Um, and bear in mind, this is John Walker. If John Walker's 50, he would still score every <laughs> penalty that, that he got. And Kevin Lynch overturned the decision. So there's just been some amazing, um, amazing sort of controversy. I want to speak to Jamie Curran about it. You won't remember. Um, I remember him coming on with green hair. Yeah, yeah. And you're like this guy's going to score. This yeah. is at Portman Road. And um, it's John Walk again. He's a bit slow and Curitan puts in. I just remember him running away with green hair. There's just some... It's bonkers I... that Curitan's still scoring goals as well and playing football. 
He's, what, is he 40? He's well in his 40s, yeah. I think 44. he was He was on like, he was one of the few players who was on FIFA 96 and is still playing football or something. I just get a sense with that guy of what could have what could have been, yeah. you know. Could have, I don't know. I don't know whether he was a bit of a silly boy when he was in, well, in his younger days. Certainly had the talent, didn't yeah. he? But I want to quick. I want to quickly end. Of course, we're in we're in different divisions now. When or how do both clubs, you know, end up playing each other? And what needs to happen? I, I know, like, there's going to be clever people. Well, Norwich needs to get relegated. And Ipswich needs to get promoted. But I, do you see that happening in the near future? <laughs> what I can see happening is. We'll be in the bloody EFL trophy next season and we'll lose at home to your <laughs> under 23s. <laughs> we thought that might happen this season. Would you count that as a derby win if you did if you did win you against can't, them? Can you? No, you can't. not if it's your under I know Sunderland and Newcastle yeah. um, played, didn't they? But no, it's very difficult because from our point of view, if and when you come down, you're going to be parachute money again i don't want to go anywhere near norwich in the championship when they got parachute money honestly uh we we spoke about this before it would be nice to come on a level footing i know norwich have earned their stature advantage and their financial advantage with the many promotions that you've talked about in the in the last 15 20 years um you never know. You never know. There could be a situation where you're maybe having a bad season higher up the pyramid and we get you in the FA Cup um, and we're having a good time. There's a chance of winning then, but you would likely think it would be in the championship because yeah. you can't see if it's been in the Premier League anytime, anytime <laughs> soon, can you? So, um, no, I mean, when, when do you think it happens again then? One two one two. Okay, sorry, mate. Um, yeah, I think it would be it would be very interesting if we if we drew each other in in a cup. And as you mentioned there, this EFL trophy if, is it called that or the checker trade or something odd? Oh, it's the leasing dot com. The leasing dot com. Yeah, we lo- um, we lost the way to Exeter, Jack. <laughs> oh yeah, was that the the penalty shootout one? No, that was in oh. the League Cup the season before. Was it? Oh, it, um, all, all no, your... This was this is peak Ipswich because Lee Martin who we signed for an absolute fortune under Roy Keane, and he was terrible, scored the winning goal. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah, I, I, I know you always mention parachute payments, and over the past kind of few years, it has played out that way. But when you're a Norwich fan on the day, it doesn't matter what squad you've what got. What you're, you yeah, you're still No, you're still incredibly nervous because anything can happen on, on the day. And I know that's a really kind of cliche thing to say, but in in them games, I don't think it matters too much kind of what players you've got on the pitch. You just need to go into it with a bit of momentum. You need a few bits of quality, but no matter the financial power you've got or, or not, it's still, you know, anything can happen on that it's day. It's just so difficult, Jack. Quality, all, quality always tells, doesn't it? Do you know it what does. I mean? It does. And over, and over a period of time, it does. But it still doesn't get rid of them nerves on, on the morning of, no, the, of a match no. day. Let me ask you this. Do you actually enjoy the games? No. I no, haven't. Me, put it this way. Me. and I, I know a lot of fans will probably have a go at me for this. I haven't missed it this season at all. No, I, I haven't actually, to be um, honest. But... No. And, and if it doesn't happen for another five, ten years, then I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Put it that way. Well, yeah, but all you Norwich fans are going to be 15 years unbeaten, <laughs> yeah. 17 years unbeaten. It's 20 only years. Counts if, <laughs> only counts if we're actually And playing. you know what? Every single anniversary, there will be another Talk Norwich City poster out there for you to buy. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right then, mate. That's uh, that's good. Please do let us know your thoughts on uh, on on Reeve and Bloom. Could this be a series? I'm sure we can talk about other bits and pieces. Let us know your favourite derby game. I know there's going to be Norwich fans, and I know there's going to be Ipswich fans watching. So it's going to be really interesting to see um, what your favourite games are. There's going to be a contrasting um, range of ages here as well. My uh, my memory doesn't go as far back as, as some. If you're so, um, if you're over. 50 and you're an Ipswich fan you can boss this debate yeah, don't worry about it a bit, there's a few yeah. five nils in there in the in the <laughs> 70s but yeah no um we'd be really interested as well in the comments Jack um if there's topics people want us to talk about um it doesn't have to be Ipswich or no. Norwich necessarily obviously Jack's got a bit more inside track than me but we're across all of the um all of the football happenings at the moment so yes um yeah 
No, for sure. And if, if nothing else, is a good excuse for me and Ben to catch up over Skype. So, uh, yeah, please do let us know. We'll see you Picks very soon. Takes us away from the alcohol. For well, exactly. Hour, exactly. <laughs> that could be another episode. What, are, you, are, you, are you a wine drinker? Are you an ale drinker? I am. Look at the state of me because I'm a wine drinker. <laughs> <laughs> we, could have a, we could have sort of a wine tasting session and, and, and upload we that. We could be like Rob Brydon and Steve Coogan. <laughs> in, in the, I can't do impressions, though. I'm terrible. <laughs> Yeah, that would be uh, that would be the most pompous football video ever to go out, wouldn't it? <laughs> sipping on it, sipping on yeah, an ice. Come on, I, I must have already made the most pompous football <laughs> video. Come on. <laughs> I did actually see a comment the other day, actually, that was saying are you missing sitting in your car talking about the football. Do you? Do you? Is there any excuse for you to drive at the moment? Um, well, my my missus' grandma um, is ninety something, oh, and we've, we've yeah, we've ordered some frozen um some frozen so i'm over in bedfordshire and she's um she's in dunstable so the longest drive i've had is over there to drop some stuff off um budgeons is a walk away (laughs) and um marks and spencer's garage down there no i i am missing sitting yelling at my car and people (laughs) knocking on the window trying to get in the video but there you go um no i think uh, i think we've bored people enough today Uh, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again very soon Bye bye